Well, I want to start by asking you what, what do you think are going to be the kind of priority issues for, the, for a new government? We will have a new government of some stripe mm. in a couple of months' time. What do you think they're going to, how are they going to front up to the challenges of cyber security and, yes. and cyber crime? One of the things that's becoming more and more apparent is that cyber is not a single technological issue the way that we have tended to think about it over the last what, 10, 15 years. Uh, it covers a gamut of social issues, social interactions. Uh, and the problem is that the field itself is becoming more and more noisy. The signal to noise ratio is diminishing. And so there is a tendency just to leap on the latest thing and trying to react to that. So the challenge for the government is going to be to how to best to overcome that immediate need for reaction, which they'll need to do, but rather than just coming in and having a knee-jerk reaction, take the time to think about the longer term. And the longer term includes questions such as how do we build the social capital amongst our people to be able to deal technologically and socially, politically, economically with these challenges? Uh, how do we invest in our institutions and research organisations to actually have that long-term investment into mm. the future, uh, rather than just relying on, let's bring another law in and put another law in place? Because we'll end up in a thicket of laws that will actually diminish our capability to take a longer-term view and do what's best for our society. What we don't get, I think you're emphasising, is just the variety of, for want of a criminal conduct or disruption that we're actually dealing with under that basket of yes. cyber security. And it can be state actors, you know, trying to undermine, I don't know, nuclear facilities. I'm thinking of Stuxnet as a kind of cla as a classic example, right down to, you know, social media bullying, cell phone, the sorts of things that take place in social media. It might yeah. be scams, it might be all kinds of, uh, you know, misuse, if you like, of the internet uh, and abuse of the internet. And I'm thinking too of things like child exploitation materials and so on. So that variety is a bit of a challenge too, isn't it? Yes. And the area in which you deal with mainly is a really, it's like a, it's like a petri dish of all these things. This is where the testing ground is. This is where a lot of those tools can be tested. And what we're seeing is that those tools are tested in those environments. Uh, because it's all globally networked, they can spread very quickly. And nation state actors, particularly those with the big four regimes that we're seeing in this space, which is Russia, China, the uh, North Korea and Iran, are picking up those tools and techniques and then reinforming them. And so we're still seeing this um, uh, positive feedback loop in, in the cyber domain. One of the issues is because it's entirely man-made, is how do we actually you know, deal with it? How can we shape that environment for, for good rather than just leave it for, you know, for bad and let it rot at the edges and fall apart? Well, I mean, yeah, look, I think there are so many different challenges. There are lots, I, my, I'm, very, I'm quite optimistic, I mean, uh, in, in the sense that some of, these, some of these areas, some of the sorts of, you know, because what, what's really happened is the internet's enabled yep. crime. It's a facilitator. Yes. Uh, you know, before the 1990s, yes, there was child exploitation or child sex abuse material, but it wasn't on the scale. Mm. So there's the scaling up problem, which you clearly have identified. And then, as you say, there's this interesting interaction or iteration between, you know, criminal activity, yeah. crime follows opportunity, and the way in which states intermesh with that. So there is, there is, a, there is a, a greater complexity. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of interested a little bit in what you said about the sort of cyber security training, education, research area, a bit close to us, yes. uh, because we, we know we have a profound shortage yes. of the kind of expertise, the skill sets that we need, and we're desperate to try to make it more multidisciplinary as well. So what's the next step, do you think, Leslie, so, in, in that side of it? Because that is a real, that is a yeah. real challenge, isn't it? There's a couple of things. There's a media mm. education problem. I'll get back to that. But mm. there's the analogy I often use mm. is public health. So 150 years ago, we had to, governments, had to convince people that there were these invisible things that could do them harm. Mm. And not only that, if they sort of, you know, were themselves infected, then they could affect their broader population, yeah. their family yeah. and society. Okay. And this mm. is not, un, you know, there's mm. a, it's a useful analogy yeah. because it, it illustrates yeah. mm. how we have to put in those particular mm. behaviours. We have to trust individuals. We also trust organisations to do things. It is not merely the government to do things, and it's a, that enabling of the broader society. So now we wash our hands. We have vaccinations. You know, we know about human immunity. We have institutions like hospitals to take worse, you know, care of the worst cases. And I think there is something we can learn from that in the cyber realm. Uh, the, you know, the analogies obviously aren't one-to-one, yeah, -one, sure, but, it's, but it's, it's close. It does talk to you, talk to prevention. Yes. 
does talk to how yes. you sh reshape the, yes. the environment to be less risky. And I we guess, also are educated risk. about how we can be healthier and so mm. on as well. Mm. As well. Mm. I think on the education side, um, I often talk about that broader ecosystem. We cannot just rely on law enforcement. We cannot just rely on the technologists. We have to broaden that understanding so that people just take those aware and take those preventative measures. We also have to ensure that people who do things like the uh, funding and resourcing and build the economic models are aware of the, of the downsides and think proactively about how they can improve things rather than throw their hands up say, oh, I've had a problem, I need someone yeah, to help someone me. Come and fix it. Yeah, look, I think that, I mean, you're absolutely, obviously yeah. the prevention pr approach is going to be the one that's going to yield bigger returns and figuring out how to do that yeah. is important. But we have got a couple of different levels, haven't we, Leslie? Yes. One, one that sort of kind of worries me a bit is that we have, inf you know, we have the, what I would call the high, you know, the national security type, the infrastructure, mm -hmm. the kinds of things that we really must protect. And then we've got, of course, uh, you know, the, the, for want of a better word, you know, the mum and pop sort of yes. disasters that come through ransomware or yes. romance frauds or whatever scams that are around. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it strikes me as that uh, we might, I don't know, look, this is, a, this is a question I want yeah. to put to you. Are we putting enough effort in into target hardening, if you like, producing, cap enabling capable guardianship to look after our really, you know, our, our key infrastructure needs. Mm. And are we putting enough money into that? Uh, I mean, I, I'm, yeah. I, 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 do, I do think there is a relationship actually, by the way, yeah, yes. between the higher, you know, people yes. attacking computer systems, grabbing yes. databases, yes. going after, disrupting either as competitors yeah. or, uh, you know, commercial commitment. Yes. We see this on the dark net market, yes. just as a matter. It's quite fascinating. Mm. You've got a lot of illicit crypto markets out there and they're constantly fighting each other as yes. well. Yes, there's a hyper competition yeah, in yeah. place. And they're, so there's yes. distributed denial of services tax going on all the time. So if, yes. from us, from a research point of view, it's a bit yeah. painful because we're trying to collect data. Yes, so this yeah. is where I think we have mm. to rethink what society is and looks like mm. because it's clear that our a tax surface, mm. bro, the technical kind of term, getting, is, yeah, very, is broad it's big, and broadening. Isn't it? yeah. mm. And so we have to harden from mm. the nation state mm. level downwards. Mm. Hardening merely the nation state is not enough. Mm. Hardening at the individual level is not going to be enough. Mm. We also need to understand that the, the adversary has a range of different motive. So particularly in the crime space, it is um, you know, about money and you know, mm. about you know, uh, ways that, whether it's actually directly pulling money out or mm. getting credentials to on sell to, yeah. to et cetera. Yeah. So there's a market market mechanism there. Uh, some of the nation state act actors are actually more interested in disruption, mm. confusion, mm. Uh, eroding our social mm. norms. So we need to also put into place a lot of things about how we actually strengthen our society. Mm. And that's where I'm concerned about just regulation, just as a response, because that makes things more brittle. Uh, you need to give people the ability to be able to respond and harden their own services. Yeah, well, I think the problem too with the, the, the law, I mean, not, 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 not that I would be arguing that it is solely a law enforcement response, but the problem is there is an appetite, there's a huge appetite for, you know, law enforcement services. Yes. And we've got to have, you know, we were really saying yeah. we've got to have some appetite control mm -hmm. and we've got to be able to direct those yeah. limited resources in the best way we can. So in a, in a sense, I guess, look, it does remind me, we've been saying this for a long time yeah. actually, the person or the company or the individual the, or the corporations or I don't know, the, the innovators mm. who can put together a really clever mousetrap, for yes. want of a better, better word, uh, that can help yes. unwitting people like us to use yes. the technology as a general purpose technology. Mm. Can they come up with something, a better mousetrap? Yeah. And can we come up with, the people who can generate high level of trust and efficiency, mm. security, mm. They're, the going, they're going to profit yeah. in this environment. Yes. And I guess what troubles me a bit, Leslie, is I don't see governments having a role in that. Or they may have no. a role, but they, they don't deliver that kind of product, do no. they? No. Well, there's two things there. Mm. Firstly, mm. we can see that mechanism that you mm. know, already in play as being mm. a commercial advantage. So Apple plays yeah. on that very does, you know, does a lot. Now it does. And now does, it does. Yeah. Yes, now mm. it does. And mm. it's doing a very good job in that yeah. space. Mm. Uh, at the government level, this is where we... we I think mm. governments have to put a bit more thought into things because mm. it's very easy for them to say, right, we will control, we will act, we mm. will do things. Mm. And then, of course, when it doesn't work because all software mm. is vulnerable, vulnerable mm. 
uh, all those guarantees aren't put into place uh, or at least shown to be, well, actually we didn't really understand. Mm. Yeah. yeah, or it was used in an environment we hadn't anticipated, all, sorts, sort of all kinds of things so go wrong. A, yeah. yeah, and so mm. there's an erosion mm. of, well, how can we trust governments? Mm. And then on top of that, you have, you know, oh, yeah. Even in our society, we have the fallout of things like Snowden and so on. So how can we trust mm. these people? Mm. So there's a lot of work government has to do about rebuilding trust. They cannot okay. demand it. You cannot yeah, enforce it. Right. You have to earn it. Yeah. And that's a hard road and it requires a lot of time and attention and investment and smart people to actually, and empathetic people. So one of the other problems we have too is that people are people. They're messy. And we try to sort of make it, well, this is a standardized person. That's what they, everyone should look like that. People are messy. They grow and change. It's like Beto O'Rourke coming out as being the cult, you know, former member of the cult of the dead cow, you know, former hacker group. Okay, all yeah, right. I just, just picked that, up that reference. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah. and people, yeah. and, you know, sure. these days it would be seen. Oh, he's really bad. Mm. He's up there with Anonymous mm. and those, mm. you know, mm. etc. Mm. Now it's seen as well. He's actually, and you can see how people evolve and change. And we have to be more forgiving of people and let them grow and express themselves because it's creativity that will actually help us get through that. And how do you foster that? And yeah. how do you bring that into an ethical space yeah. in the sort of kind of suppression of hacking and all the things that we, yeah. we, 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 that we worry about? That's actually interesting because one of the things we're going to be doing first mm. and what when we do is, again, a norm, norms and ethics mm. thing. So you need to be able to pass a reasonably high level mm. I think to so, be able to yeah. progress, progress yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it comes down to, given that we have doubts about institutions, you know, um, uh, you know, politicians, frankly, mm. do need to step up. Yeah. But there's a debate mm. to be had, particularly as we're seeing a bifurcation in the world between liberal and illiberal regimes. And the natural reactions of all states is to try and exert control in defence, and that mm. takes us down a liberal path. Mm. There's a discussion to be had about values, and mm. I think about, you know, commonality of values, the world we want to live in. And that's where you start pulling some of these really bright students who, who are motivated by those, those drivers. Yeah. Uh, to actually come together. Look, I'm really interested in that. I mean, I, I, I am interested in, in, the, in the values and the, the yeah. fact that we, are, we have to think about the kind of societies we want to mm. live in and we have to nurture yeah. them. And it does go back to all sorts of kind of issues about how we keep our democracies, democracies vibrant. Mm. And there's a lot of concern, as you say. There's, a lot of, there's a, going to be some conversations around surveillance, for example. Yes. And how much of that we yes. can tolerate. Um, we, yes. Clearly, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, aghastness, and that's not a proper word, mm. or awkwardness around the whole social response, you know, what's going on in China, mm -hmm. the social credit system, people can see that, so there's anxiety about surveillance. Mm. Uh, there's quite a lot more concern about privacy than I think we've we've been aware of. And I, I can uh, completely agree. Yeah, and one of the classic problems is that we've often said, oh, kids don't care. And no, actually, they, they care they, enormously. They care deeply. And we've got problems like sex or say, you know, sexting, you know, evolving cultural behaviours and norms, yeah. which you and I would find quite sort of strange or, yes. or rather odd, which are very commonplace. And so we have to kind of address these yes. things. And so the downside of sexting is sextortion. Yes. And it ends up, you know, and they end up in databases uh, where, you know, yeah. people can misuse them and so on. So, it's, so it is a pretty, it's scary from that point yes. of view. And so again, that value, how are we going to get that, how are we going to reshape that, Leslie, mm. do you think? I mean, I think it's a really important point. I, mean, I do think it's yeah. important. I really do. And but I think this is a conversation mm. we mm. have to have nationally. Mm. Uh, mm. And I think we need to change the tone of the conversation. Mm. If I just take a step sideways mm. to Christchurch for a moment, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. one of the things that has really mm. struck me mm. about Jacinta Ardern's response, mm. I, I am full of admiration yeah. because by coming back and showing empathy to people, yeah, she's very warm, isn't she? secondly, yeah. but what she's saying is this is not us. Mm. Now it's interesting because rather than coming down and saying, oh my God, we have to stop this, she's saying, she's actually empowering the people of New Zealand to say, step up and say, this is not us. We are going to exemplify better behaviour. And that, it's a small thing, but it's just a really oh, different mindset. It's typically mindset. powerful from a leadership point of view. Exactly. Don't you, don't you think, Lucy? I mean, yes. I, I, yeah, just, yeah. And I think mm. when we start mm. having debates about mm. the sexting, sextortion, mm. those mm. sort of things, mm. again, coming back and saying, this is not us. Mm. This is not the society we want to be. It's simple things like that to actually just shift that thinking a bit. It may not, it sounds weak, it may not be mm. enough, but I think yeah. it's also better than coming down and just yeah. saying, well, here's a law, because you also disempower people. You, you risk moral hazard yeah. as a result yeah. because someone else will take care yeah, of it's that. Yeah, it's the collective efficacy, broken exactly. windows problem. No, look, yes. look, look, look I, I mean, I, I, I do get that. Uh, and indeed, actually, of course, 
the, the possession of the video and the manifest, of yes. course, that's been controlled now for obvious yes. reasons. And then we get to the mm. other side, which is mm. again more the law enforcement. So mm. someone yeah. has done something. Mm. What are the mm. what? How do we how do we measure that? What sort of evidence? Given that it's going to be far more widespread, can we build up resilience in people so the victims are yeah. focusing yeah. more on the you know victims yeah. and resilience? And I they, think do, we'll what get are they, you know, and indeed, how do they yes. how do they manage this at their own yeah. sort of individual ethical level? I mean. Cutest has to be given to Facebook. I mean, yeah. they did pull down, uh, pull, pull down one and a half million videos and so on. Uh, because Facebook is not 4chan, yeah. and, you know, so there are lots of other you know yes. players in that uh, in that space. Yes. But it does strike me as it's going to be a conversation, a difficult conversation we're yeah. going to have about how we're going to regulate social media as if yeah. it were because it actually acts like a media yes. platform and i think it's mm. i think confusing facebook mm. with say 4chan is yeah it's pretty very yeah, yeah. very, it's very different totally things. different facebook yeah. is a walled garden <laughs> mm. um, and mm. even there they're mm. having difficult control you know mm. so the spaces that mm. particularly you're looking at yeah. the dark web mm. that's mm. much more the wild wild much west more, much more so the wild west, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm saying, what I'm really saying is that Facebook did respond, I think, mm. responsibly, but they've got huge challenges in the mm. content area. And we keep, and that's why I do think, uh, in a way, uh, what governments have been, government have been doing in the research area with AI and machine, that'll all come into play. Yeah. I mean, it'll take time. Yeah. But I can see, uh, I can envision a, t a space when we're, we're able to kind of catch up yes. in a way that we haven't been able to do before. And yeah. so I'm, I'm still optimistic, but I, I I don't think we're going to stop it's Brevik number three or no. whatever. You know, I mean, that's, no. it's a tough, that's we're a tough gig, people. isn't it? You know? Yeah, mm. but uh, I think with regard to the, the AI, mm. um, we shouldn't avoid looking at the silver mm. bullet. I oh, definitely it's not. It's, o o it's overhyped. Yeah. There's no question. Yes. We're still working in what we call narrow AI, but, right? It's yeah. not general AI, but yes. it's still particular. It but can be really helpful. Yeah. And again, those small <laughs> narrow things, understanding yeah. that they're mm. one of a suite of tools that we'll exactly. be looking at and so on yeah, as well, exactly. rather than saying, well, we've got the killer app here. Well, no, no it's no. not that yet. No.